February. It is six o'clock. Yes. So I'm going to call to order the select board meeting for tonight, January 13th. Um, we are starting early to allow us to have an executive session at seven o'clock and get some other things accomplished. We will start as always with announcements and a review of the agenda followed by public comment. We have the town manager's report, which will include, again, potentially talking about agenda, um, discussion with the town clerk around polling locations. We will, I think that should say, we consider approving amendment to the committee vacancy policy, not the committee on vacancy. <laughs> committee <laughs> vacancy policy, I don't know why I put on That's there. Okay. Thank you, Allison, you're right. Um, we will talk with the town manager, obviously, about the building commissioner succession plan. Talk again about our schedule. We will call for the spring town meeting, have a budget update, and then by 6.15, we will have a continuation of the public hearing to review the blood farm earth removal permit. Um, we have our typical list of ongoing issues that we may have updates on. We have an opportunity for liaison reports, and then we have some minutes before we go into the aforementioned executive session. Um, so does anyone have any announcements? I have one, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I just have one added addition to the agenda. I'm gonna ask the board to authorize the town manager and one member uh, to sign the warrants. We have a holiday next week, and tracking down select board members is kind of difficult, so I'd ask the board to authorize the town manager and one selectman to sign the warrants as pursuant to our charter. So I'll discuss it with you on the other business. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Becky? Uh, yes, I just wanted to um, report that <clears throat> I attended a program at the Nashua River Watershed Association uh, last week. And it, this followed a conversation I had with Nick Gualco about the forest legacy program which we were asked to sign a letter about in the fall and it was kind of confusing what it was all about and so nick told me about this program that was going to happen where they were going to be discussing that the forest legacy program and he actually could not attend because he was out on paternity leave because he and his wife just had their first child so i went and um it was very informative and i learned a lot and uh what i learned is that the forest legacy program we got a letter saying they were applying to expand. It's a federal program, but it's administered by the state. And it referred to southeastern Massachusetts, and I said, this is so weird because we're not in southeastern Massachusetts. But it turns out their expansion is a big chunk of land in southeastern Massachusetts down towards the Cape, and another chunk of land that includes essentially the eastern half of Groton. So it is in our interest to have that program expanded. They seem very confident that uh, the federal government will agree to the expansion. And just to give you a brief summary, what the Forest Legacy Program is, is a program that pays market value for undeveloped forest parcels that are under threat of development or and or have significant environmental ecological value. And obviously, we have a lot of that kind of land in Groton, so it's a good program to know about. Interesting. Thank you. Any other announcements? Public comment? I actually had one other yep. announcement. Um, the, uh, I sent out the invitation this week for the nonprofit council. We will be meeting on uh, January 31st, Friday, from 9 to 10.30 in the morning at the center the former senior center, the new building in West Groton. And just uh, for the benefit of those who may be watching on television, this is a group that is open to representatives of any nonprofit organizations that are operating in Groton. If you're not on our mailing list and would like to come, please get in touch with me and uh, I'll certainly send you an invitation and you don't need an invitation to come. Very good. All right, um, any, there wasn't any public comment, correct? All right, Mark, turn it over to you. Um, I asked you to jump ahead to page seven uh, in your packet. I asked the town clerk to come up to the table. Um, so as I told the board back in December, now that the center in West Groton is open, we want to relocate precinct one back to the center because that's where they've always voted out of precinct one. They've been here at the town hall. Uh, Michael and I have done a review. We've talked about it, and we would like to recommend to the board that the select board set the polling locations as follows. Precinct one at the center, precinct two at the Groton Country Club, and precinct three here at Town Hall. 
Uh, Mike's here to answer questions about that, but the main focus has to do with parking and access at the Country Club, and we're trying to make it better. And Precinct 1 here at the Town Hall worked pretty well. It worked pretty well. Yep. Yeah. So we're recommending, and, and only the board can set the precinct locations for voting. So that is our recommendation, and as I said, Mike is here. He's given you a uh, how we pretty much went about looking at our proposal and, and, and the things that we went through to get there. It's in your packet starting on page 7. So open for discussion. Folks have questions or I have some yeah. questions. Yeah, go ahead. Um, and first, I'll say Mike and I have had conversations about this, and um, this is a tricky question. And unfortunately, we don't have perfect solutions. We have good solutions. Um, my concern about the town hall, and uh, I guess I'd just like to hear you talk a little bit about the parking situation on really major voting days or the town hall? My biggest concern with parking in general, well, not so much at the, the center anymore, but uh, probably the town hall and certainly the country club, my major concern is gonna be the November election, mm -hmm. where I expect we'll have 80% turnout, less some early voters and so forth. But we'll have a lot of sign holders, we'll have, just have a lot of traffic. And um, <clears throat> the parking there, the I think the issue is that the the aisle between parking spots is narrow. At the country club. At the country club. Yes, right. And which, you know, hinders people pulling into spots, pulling out of spots. And it's really uncomfortable, it's tight, um, and, you know, sometimes just hard to find a spot. So for two precincts, uh, and especially in November, mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to be a big problem there. Um, I'd recommend bringing one precinct to town hall where the parking is more spread out. You know, we have a parking lot in the back of town hall. The, we can use the station's parking lot during the day, the street parking. Um, and I don't, I don't have a count of the number of spots available around here, but I think it would just work better and be more fluid uh, in terms of traffic. Because we also have all the employees. Well, we, we during that, that's a very good question. During the elections, <coughs> our employees do not park in the town parking lot. We have them park behind Prescott. Okay. So we, we, town employees are not using that parking lot, so it's wide open uh, during the day. We don't park anywhere near the town hall, so we are away from the facility. So is it likely that on election <clears throat> days, particularly the November, but one or two others have been pretty heavy in the past, that we, uh, that parking at the electric light company would be? We, we'd ask for permission to use that if we have to, so we, we'll, make sure we have enough, uh, that we, we make sure that the, the employees are not utilizing this facility that is solely for the voters and, for that one day. Yeah. And the um, unoccupied bank building that has a parking lot, mm -hmm. it, what is the status of that? We had permission, when we, remember when we had the trailers in the back? We received permission from the bank to park in their parking lot for those two months that we were out. We can ask the bank for permission to use that parking lot as well during elections until something happens there. That would be helpful, yeah. 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 I also had, uh, so I think we should do all of those things just because I think, you know, it's hard to get a place on the street to come for this meeting tonight, so. Well, um, we might even, get, you know, I'm sorry to interrupt you, we might consider even uh, restricting parking to voter parking on election day. Uh-huh. On Main Street, we could do on that. Main Street, yeah. Right, yep. right. <coughs> do we normally hire, um, a police officer, like a, where the country club road goes off 119? We yes. usually, at least at rush hours, we usually have a police officer. On voting days. Right. Would we do that here at the town hall I think also? we should, I talked to uh, Chief Luth about that, and I think at least during the rush hours we should do that here as yeah. well. It's the, which would be an added, added cost. cost. Yeah, yeah. Th there is an added cost because you're supposed to have a, a, a policeman at all polling locations during the 16 hours. 16 hours? Uh, 12 hours. It's 13 hours. 13 hours that the polls yeah. are open. Um, now we will have to hire additional police officers for the day because we used to just have one officer. So now we'll have to have a police officer here as well. But can I'm not sure you need a whole day on the oh, no, we don't. traffic. Uh, maybe it's three hours in the morning and two or three hours yeah. in for the, the evening. For the traffic officer, yes, yeah. but the polling location itself needs a police Absolutely. officer. Absolutely, yes. And so they, they both can. of those are expensive. They can. And the polling location person can't run out and do traffic. No, in the no, no, it's a different different office. Right. 
Um, you mentioned also lighting. What did you have in mind? Well, when the we, the, <coughs> the um, excuse me, the lobby of town hall, which is where we'd be checking voters in, right. the lighting is dim. That's and right. And I'm thinking yeah. of just getting, you know, for $150 or so, some floodlights that just kind of put more light into the lobby. Okay. Because I heard that complaint uh, that yep. the lighting in town hall <coughs> was really quite difficult for some of the voting operations in the room the lighting is very good I think it's just in the lobby it's pretty it's dim so I'd like to beef that up so the layout you're envisioning is checking in in the lobby and all the um, voting booths are in the meeting room in the meeting room correct and this how many can fit in there well we've done uh, we've done several elections in precinct mm -hmm. you know precinct it housed precinct one for several elections right. so we get um, I forget the number it's like 20 voting booths and that worked I mean, it, it works. Okay. It's again, it's a little snug, but it, it works. Precinct one is usually the busiest precinct too, during right. elections. I mean, the good news is that there's early voting for the November election. And, and, and if I may, yes, and I would encourage people to do that. There is also one week of early voting for this primary. The primary that's on March third. Great. The week before. Plus, one, so one week we have early voting available as well. Right. And I encourage voters who you know, are concerned about parking, or if you're at the country club and you're concerned about walking the stairs, or if you just want to early vote, come early vote. Right. And if you have, um, we also have absentee voting, and um, you know, issues with walking the hill or the stairs at the country club qualify as a um, reason to, or to, to absentee To request vote. an absentee Absolutely. ballot, which means yep. you can vote in the town hall ahead of time or yes. at home, right? Either by mail or in town hall. Correct. And it worked okay with town hall operations to not use that space. Oh, absolutely. For the amount of time. Well, what ends up happening is we have asked the light department to make their room available. We have Legion Hall. We now have the center that has a thousand meeting rooms. That's an exaggeration, <laughs> but they have good meeting space over there as well. So right. there will be room for people to meet while that room is gone for the week of early voting in May and March, the two weeks of early voting in the fall and then the election days. So we, we should be okay. Yeah. okay. <clears throat> well, I want to thank Mike for all the work you've done, because I know yeah. it's been a lot. Thank you. Mike, so the official vote from the board tonight is to set the polling locations for Precinct 1 at the center, Precinct 2 at the Groton Country Club, and Precinct 3 at the Groton Town Hall. That's the vote you need for them to that make would be the my, <clears throat> That would be my recommendation, and if you take that vote, we can implement this plan that you see in the charts. And is that vote, in terms of dates, is that for all 2020 elections? or That's forever until you change it again. Moving yes. So, so I'm, yeah, okay. yeah. Changing voting locations is, you know, we have three, four, five thousand 5,000 people that get affected by this. Yeah. So we, by law, we do need to notify each household that has a voter. So there's some cost there. Um, plus, you know, we still have people showing up at locations today that we moved from three right. or four years ago. So there's an element of confusion um, just moving around. So if we do make a move, I'd like it to be as permanent as we could make it. And you're comfortable with this on a permanent basis? I think so. I mean, the Precinct 1 experience here at Town Hall was, was good. good. Yeah. I mean, it's not fantastic, but it was good. I think it'll be better than the, the crowded situation at the Country Club, for the big, especially for the big elections. Any other questions? Yeah, John. No, I was going to make a motion. Oh, go for it. Uh, I move that uh, we declare that Precinct 1 will vote in um, the center in West Groton. Uh, Precinct 3 will, revote, will vote in Town Hall, the building we're sitting in. And Precinct 2 will uh, vote at the Country Club. Yes, thank you. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very Thank you, Michael. Thank, Thank you for your time. <coughs> Thank you very much. Um, I'd ask the select board to uh, reopen the public hearing for the earth removal uh, permit for Richard Blood, 94 West Main Street. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, you can see uh, Don Black is here representing uh, the applicant. Michelle Collette is here representing the stormwater, uh, earth removal stormwater committee. Uh, you can see up on the screen a uh, memorandum from the uh, Stormwater Committee that they voted on January 7th and voted to unanimously recommend that you renew the earth removal permit granted to 
uh, to Richard Blood. Are there conditions, Michelle? The standard conditions that are on the following page that have, were adopted in 1987 that have applied Richard. to all grandfathered permits since the bylaw was amended in 1987. Which are the standard um, yes. mm -hmm. template for these it kinds is. of situations. Right. Okay. Correct, and it's been attached to all of uh, the earth removal permits on the blood property over the years. I know that they typically haven't done much excavating in recent years. Is there an upper limit to kind of how much they can? There, there isn't because okay. they're grandfathered operations uh, that predated the original earth removal bylaw that was adopted in 1963. And when the earth removal bylaw was amended in 1987, which really um, strictly regulated earth removal operations, there were two ongoing operations. One was um, the blood property and the other was the black property. And um, before he passed on, uh, Barney Blood was always, always meticulous about making sure that his permit never expired. And I am certain that he passed the word on to his son Richard to continue to do the same. And I think at this point, it's really incidental removal that goes on over there. And John certainly. The limit of excavation mm -hmm. used to be five acres, a maximum of five acres. And <clears throat> there's nowhere near that yeah. much area yeah. left at this point. Okay. Yeah. Questions, concerns, comments? I have no problem with this. And then I'd ask the board to close the public hearing. I move that we close the public hearing for the renewal of the earth removal permit for blood farms. Sorry. Does someone want to second that? No, second. All in favor of closing the public hearing? Aye. Aye. I'd ask the board to renew the permit two years. Two years, correct. I'd ask the board to renew the permit effective uh, this evening through January 13, 2022. Did I do my math right? You did. I have the two Those years are correctly. big numbers, too. <laughs> yeah. So moved. With the conditions as I recommended by the committee. Did you say two years or three two years? Two years. Yeah. Oh, it's all Two years. Okay. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All righty. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you, guys. I'm sorry. Sorry for your loss. Thank you. Um, Becky and I have worked on the committee vacancy policy uh, to address the issue of interviewing candidates. Should the board decide uh, to uh, not take the recommendation from the committee? If you go to page uh, 10 uh, in, in your packet, we added one sentence uh, to the uh, to the policy. And it basically says, should the board decide to interview the candidates, they shall schedule the interview for the next regularly scheduled meeting that all candidates can attend. A very simple um, amendment, but it sort of makes sense. So what would happen is I bring you the recommendation from the committee. Should the board decide not to take that recommendation, the board then waits, schedules it for the next regularly scheduled meeting in which all the candidates can come in for an interview with the board. I think it's a good change to the, uh, to the um, policy. So I'd ask the board to consider amending the policy as recommended. So I have one question, Mark. Yep. In terms of, I'm thinking through time frame. Yep. So potentially a board could come or someone could come to the select board with a recommendation. Yep. The board would decide not to do it. Mm -hmm. We would then decide to interview the candidates. Um, in scheduling that for the next regularly scheduled meeting, is there a potential to be creating a delay that's too long, or it, is that? Well, really it depends. It depends. We usually meet, we, we usually meet weekly, so the hope would be that we would bring them into the next meeting of the board. Uh, if we can't get the candidates in, then yeah, you would have a you would have a okay. delay. So there is a potential. But we have the right to waive this. You right? can waive anything in your policies any t at any time. When we could set up a special meeting. That's what I yeah. 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 Right. Okay. Yes, Josh. So I didn't want to comment back when I saw this. I think this certainly addresses. Um, a recommendation made by a committee uh, to this board in terms of this board rejecting it and then interviewing the candidates. What I don't think it addresses is that if the appointment is a direct appointment of the select board rather than a at-large appointment or 
a uh, appointment just for an open committee, but where it stipulates that the select board or their designee um, should move forward. I think that our board should interview the candidate, and then we could send them on uh, for discussion by the board they're going to serve. But at the end of the day, if we are the appointing authority, I don't necessarily see that a recommendation from another board or another committee holds a, a tremendous amount of weight when it's our direct appointment. So I'd like to see some language incorporated in there to address that. And I think it's as simple as this, that it says when the vacancy on the committee is a select board member or their designee, the select board shall interview them. I think that would address it. Didn't we, however, in the issue with the Community Preservation Committee, it doesn't say select board or designee. It just says the select board appoints. I believe that is correct. It, yeah, so I think that the intent is to differentiate between a committee of five that are all appointed by the select board versus a committee where the finance committee has an appointment and other folks have appointments and then the select board appoints one or two people. Well, I can think of the Affordable Housing Trust to be specific on that where it says they shall be two members of the select board or their designees. Does that not say that, Mark? That is correct. So I think it's really important where the language um, stipulates that it is either a board member or our designee that we are the interviewers for that purpose. And if we could just incorporate language to that effect into this for that, that would resolve that issue. But in terms of everything else, this addresses it. Um, <clears throat> although it's, it's relatively minor, um, we could do some cleanup in um, 4B um, to, to just to make it uh, coincide with what's in the new charter. Mm -hmm. It's mostly just a wordage issue. Oh, because I, I nominate for appointment. Yep. Well, not every committee, though. There are some committees where by bylaw I appoint, like the Historic District Commission, for example. So then we need to we could make really that exception. The heck out of us, yeah. Yeah. So um, I think, Josh, in the, in the case of the Affordable Housing Trust, where it is, the idea is that a member of the select board is most likely to be on the committee, rather, but there's the option to, to have a designee. I think you're right. The discussion needs to start at our board because we don't want somebody else saying no. <laughs> choosing who they want if we want a member of the board to be on there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure what other, uh, I would have to do some research, but what other situations there are where it's a member of the board or their designee. You're correct I, on the CPC yeah. that, that it doesn't, it, it didn't that. Say but that, it's yeah. absolutely in terms of the Affordable Housing Trust. That right. stipulates that. Are there any others? And Don, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but you're the one who sends out the forms all the time. So if you just put the language in there, it addresses it. Well, I, I think that the Affordable Housing Trust isn't actually a select board appointed committee. <laughs> so it doesn't meet. The you Affordable know. Housing Trust is appointed by the select board. Absolutely appointed by the select board. Oh. The select board makes okay. the appointments, but it stipulates that two of the five members have to be it either doesn't, select. And it doesn't say that one of the others has to come from nope. someplace. Okay, sorry. Then the I'm only wrong. other one might be the Sergeant and Beach Committee. That's a... That's a select board appointed select committee. Board appointed. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we have that, that there's a member of the select board, a member of this, a member of that. But, but if you put the language in that I suggest, <coughs> when the appointments come up the next time around or somebody resigns or, or leaves a board, right. When we go through the process, Don, Mark, and us will see it, and at that juncture, it'll come up. And so, it just, and, and so what was the language you wanted? It. Did you write that down earlier? What I said? No. Of course not. That's okay. She writes everything down, but not that. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, what I said that is that if um, the charge of the committee or the committee um, makeup um, specifically designates. Uh, that the select board shall appoint a member of the board or their designee that right. the interview is conducted by this board. I believe that's what I said. Yeah. Okay. I think maybe that should go in as as uh, 4B and the current 4B should change to 4C. 
something like that. It's just really minor. I would just like us to have that bite at the apple. And, and while we are on the subject, I would like to point out that this, uh, there is a very different process for a vacancy on an elected board. Mm -hmm. And we all need to understand that this doesn't apply. We have a different policy for that. No. Mm -hmm. right. There's a totally different policy for that. Right. Be, by right. the way, we will be following that policy soon because there's a vacancy on the park commission. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Have we had any applicants? We just have posted we it. We just advertised it. Uh, okay, I was wondering yep. whether that, that, okay. Is there verbiage in here or should there be verbiage that allows us to decide to interview prior to getting a recommendation from a board? I mean, if we know in advance that we want to do that, is that something we can just... We can waive anything, right, in, in terms of this. Well, I think we're going to have to do then, Allison, uh, to follow that. When we receive a notification of a resignation from a committee, mm -hmm. then Don and I will have to flag that and bring it to the board. We can add language in here yeah. and bring it to the board and say, Okay, we have a vacancy right. on the Accessibility Commission. Yeah. We're going to post it and we're going to go through the process of having them interview and recommend. And then if the board says, okay, fine, if the board wants to flag that one, we can do it that way. We put it on the ongoing issues list, vacancies, and I can update mm -hmm. you various meetings where the vacancies are. That's not, that's not that difficult. To do I'm right. just thinking that then the... It, no, then we'll know in advance. I agree with well, you. Well, if there were a call to, then we and the, the board of... The Commission on Accessibility could interview together. Yeah, sure. If you well, decide to create that a new committee, that's completely different. Well, that's your call. That's yeah. right out of the gate. If it's our committee, we get to interview as we've done many times. All right, let me take another crack at this policy and bring okay. it back. Thank you. Sorry about that. No, don't I be just, sorry. It wasn't worth sending it to you and then circulating it, and it was just easier to discuss it. That way we have agreement. <coughs> All right, I'll bring that back. Um, the next thing I wanted to uh, talk to the board about, and I asked Takashi to come up to the, uh, to the table, um, a little history I think is important here. Back uh, when Valerie Jenkins, Josh, you'll remember this more than anybody, um, when Valerie was the town accountant back in 2010, she came to me and said, Mark, I'm retiring in two years. I want you to think about how you want to fill this position. So I was like, well, thank you for the advance notice. I thought that was great. So what I did is I posted, ooh, Takashi, can you hit the button on that? Um, thank you. <coughs> no, just hit it once and it should turn on. There you go. If you held it down, you shut it off. <laughs> thank you, Takashi. So what I did is I did an internal posting of, applicant, of, of existing town employees that had an accounting background and asked if they'd be interested in applying for a training program to train the next town accountant. We had four internal applicants apply for the position and we ended up uh, nominating or bringing uh, Patricia Dufresne forward and she trained under Valerie Jenkins for two years. The first year she did work half time in Valerie's office, half time in her job. She was the business manager for the water sewer department. And then the second year we hired another business manager and Patricia worked full time in the town accountant's office and we actually paid two town accountants for, for two years. But at the end of the day, when Valerie retired, Patricia hit the ground running and we have one of the best town accountants in the state. It was a great process. So building commissioner is a similar position where it's very, very difficult to find building commissioners. I know there are two surrounding communities uh, to, to Groton right now that are going through the process to, to replace longtime building commissioners and they're having a hard time finding a, a, a replacement. So I know when Ed retires in September, you know, finding somebody with 35 years of experience like Ed and, and the knowledge that he has to come in here and hit the ground running will be very difficult. So I want to institute, with the board's permission, a search process similar to what I did with the accountant and training program 10 years ago. Um, basically, nine years ago. Well, no, 10 years ago now. Basically, what, what I would do is I would do an internal posting and allow for people who work for the town in some capacity that have a background in building to apply for the training program. Bring them on board and then have them work under Ed for six months 
so that when Ed retires in September, this person would be able to assume that job. Part of the training would be to train them to be a building commissioner. There's a separate test that has to happen to be a, to be a certified building commissioner. So you would need to be a certified local inspector to apply for this position, and then we would train you, and then hopefully by September you would be able to take the building commissioner test and become a certified building commissioner so that when Ed retires, that person can start. Now, there are two people who work for the town in a capacity right now that would be eligible to apply for it. One is our local inspector who works now for us that fills in for Ed when Ed is um, on vacation or out sick or whatever. And then the other is a, is a gentleman who has worked for the town in a clerk of the works capacity on four construction projects for us. The fire station, the senior center, the DPW garage, and the library roof, who has an extensive background in building and is a certified local inspector. So those two people would be eligible to apply. I'm not aware of anybody else that would be, but I think they have the capacity to, to, to go through this process and go through a training program, if the board would, would, would indulge that. There is a cost to it. I'm assuming the cost would be about $40,000 uh, for the training, but I think it's money well spent because finding somebody I think is going to be very, very difficult. So Takashi and I have talked about this a lot, and, and, and my recommendation to the board would be to allow me to do that internal posting and go through this training program and approach the finance committee for um, either a reserve fund transfer or a line item transfer at town meeting for the necessary funding. I'm here to answer any questions. It's a proposal, and I'd be interested to hear from the board. Sure. Thank you for listening to me. I have a question, Mark. And yes. I, I appreciate your bringing this to our attention as well as kind of you looking at it so far in advance. It's great to have <coughs> options at this point. Yes. Um, if both of those current employees were interested, yep. would the process be to select one to enter into the training, or would they both enter into no. the training? Then would one. The, okay, so one. it would be a... We would go through an interview process. I'd yep. set up an interview panel. Uh, as a matter of fact, even if there's one applicant, I'd still set up an interview panel. I'd ask um, a select board member to join us. I usually use Josh uh, when it comes to building issues. He's been the liaison for many years to the building department. Yep. Takashi, myself, okay. Ed, and then we'd go through an interview and then okay. bring it to the board. Other questions, comments? Well, no, just a comment. I mean, this is a very important job. And there's a tremendous amount of building going on in town. And you want somebody who's very detail-oriented that's not going to overlook issues. Yes, and as Mark had pointed out, it's very difficult to, A, find somebody to fill in as a building commissioner, uh, zoning enforcement officer. It's actually a two-pronged position here. Um, and to get somebody who's going to have the time to ramp up through a training program in conjunction with the existing building commission is only going to benefit the town. Uh, as Mark had pointed out, it worked out great in the town accountant's office. Um, you know, the duplicity to a certain degree bothers me, but by the same token, it assures me that they will learn the position from somebody who knows how to do the job. So once they get the um, license from the state, is it a license physically? Certification. Certification? That they'll be able to hit the ground running and by using uh, an internal applicant, assuming that one of the two are interested, if not both of them, I just think it gives us a high level of promoting from within and we know what we're going to get as opposed to um, hiring somebody and potentially have them not working out. So for the, that reason, I would support it, provided that the funding is enabled by either the FinCom Reserve Fund transfer or a line item transfer to town meeting. Becky? Yeah. Uh, so I think it's uh, a good idea to have the overlap of time, I think that is useful. Um, and I think it's great that we have two internal candidates. Uh, I, however, we have a policy that says every position will be advertised. And um, I don't see that we lose anything by advertising publicly in addition to internally. Um, we don't know what's out there. Maybe other towns have, you know, maybe we'll have the same experience as other towns that the applicants that we, that come in from outside are not particularly impressive. But if so, when, then we proceed. I am remembering that uh, 
two years ago when we were faced with a police chief vacancy. We considered, and there, were, there was some um, support for just uh, using internal, you know, just staying within the department. And we decided not to, and I think then we had a unanimous vote for a candidate who's proven to be extremely successful. And so I, I don't see why we would close ourselves off to the option of an outside candidate. Can I, I, don't, can, I don't think that we lose anything in doing that. Can I address that? Yeah. Ordinarily, I would agree with you, but the problem is, is if I do an advertisement for an outside candidate, we're only going to bring forward certified building commissioners. I'm not going to do that search eight months in advance because I'm not going to pay a certified building commissioner to work with another certified building commissioner. The reason I'm bringing it to you this early is if we go through a building commissioner and training program, I'm going to need those six months. If the board rejects that proposal tonight, we won't advertise the position until June. To have somebody start in September because I'm not going to hold somebody for eight months. So there's there's a timing issue, Becky, that sort of goes against um, that sort of goes against that. And with regards to the to, to the police chief search, I brought it to the board and I asked, "Do you want me to do an internal external search?" I asked your permission. You said do the external search, and that's what I did. When we went to fill in the position of principal assessor, I came to the board and said, "I want to do, I want to promote Jonathan. I'm not going to." go with that search and the board agreed with me and, and it worked out really well with, with Jonathan. So I'm bringing it to you and I'm asking for you whether or not you want me to do it. I will do what the board directs me to do obviously when it comes to hiring uh, this, this position. It is a very important position as Josh pointed out. I'm bringing it to you now because I need, if we're going to do the training, those eight months. If we're not going to do the training, then I'm going to wait until June and we'll go through a normal search process. It, and I assume that if neither of these internal applicants were interested, then or we, if in the interview process... We decide not to go forward. You decide not to go forward, then Correct. we would be back. Absolutely. Yeah. Becky's right on target okay. with that. So kind of following up with that, that was going to be my question. If we didn't use this process, you kind of half answered that, which we would go to. What kind of costs are involved in that besides the delay? Yep. I mean, I, I like the idea because I can see... Uh, it, when you're talking about at least two people, but I can see them more invested in the in the town, more the knowledge of the town, maybe even maybe even the building too. But what's the process and in, in the difference in cost? If, what, okay. what kind of cost would there be in that kind of in the delay? Or it pro it probably would be cheaper. I, I don't know. Oh, a lot, a lot. If if we were to go through, it usually costs about between two thousand five hundred and three thousand dollars to advertise for the job. Yeah. We put in trade magazines and newspapers and things like that. So you're talking about, say, $3,000 to search. The, the, the gamble there is if I don't find somebody by September 8th, then we're going to be looking to, you know, we'll have to have an interim building commission. We'll have to ask Ed to probably stick around for 20 hours. We'll have to do something. So there'll be, it will be a lot less expensive potentially, but it could be just as expensive as I go through another search. Is the pool for building inspectors a sh it's kind of it's, it's a dying breed. field. Yeah, it's a dying I mean, breed. I know we compared it to police chiefs, and I think there's a lot of a, the pool is bigger. I'm oh, thinking. absolutely. But so that's it's that's a. I'll tell you, it's Littleton and Townsend are the two towns going through it right now that I'm familiar with. I'm not sure if Littleton has found somebody, but the last time I checked, they hadn't found anybody um, over there. So it's it's a tough position. You know, Roland Bernie was a building commissioner in Littleton for 35 years. And big shoes to fill, and they pay a good, they pay a very competitive salary. More well, than and we that's pay. the other thing: a new building inspector wouldn't be making the salary that Mr. Cataldo is making. It'll be less. It'll be less. Yes, and we're competitive. I'm, I'm guessing Ed's salary is competitive, but not as competitive as Littleton's. Yeah, Littleton okay. pays more. Thanks. Yeah. I got a, uh, three things here. One. Um, Mark and I were talking at our weekly meeting last Thursday about this, and. I think we went back, I went back to say, to tell him about who the building inspector was when I moved here 30 years ago, or a little better than that. And it seemed to me that we've turned over building inspectors at a very high rate. Um, but to bring it more into reality in the shorter term, uh, we looked at 
Mark, how long since Mark's been here, how many times have we turned over that job? And what did we come up with? Four times in 10 years we've changed that. And that's really, you know, we worry about changing. And Ed's been here five, if that gives you any indication. <laughs> uh, financial resources. Um, it's just as critical uh, with this building inspector thing because if people get doing things that are outside the code, um, now we've got a huge mess on our hands. I agree with John on that. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I want to chime in. We've got the largest building construction project in the history of this town going on in this town. And to have somebody who knows what's going on inside out um, is essential right now. Um, sorry, John. Nope, that's fine. Um, thank you. Um, I, I support what Mark is, is proposing here. Uh, but I do want to um, ask that if we go that route and hire in that, that part of, the, of a process, that um, in the agreement with the, the person who's going to go through the training, um, we have a clause in there uh, uh, that, that says this person's going to stay a certain amount of time or he's going to pay us some money. Uh, I take this back to when um, the water department came to us and they wanted to do a similar kind of thing. And after, I don't know the exact time, but I think it was several months of training, the person decided to take a job someplace else. I don't think we can do that. I don't think we can. We talk to, well, talk, to, talk, to talk to town council. I'll talk to town council. What, were you, I'm sorry, Mark, were you envisioning that we would be paying for the training or the certification training, whatever? That That's part of the $40,000. That they, so I think there may be a way to say that you can get that money back if somebody does not stay. I'll a talk to town council. Time. Just as an example, if we hire a new police officer, or if we hire a new firefighter EMT, and they do not come with the credentials and the training in place, we have to pay to send them to the academy. Okay. Right. And after we do, we can't turn around if they say, well, I'm going to leave and I'm going to go to Stowe, Massachusetts, and say, oh, by the way, we paid for your training, you've got to pay us back. I don't well, think we can, but I'll find out. But that. you can, that. in some circumstances, teachers teachers that get uh, professional development paid for have to. It it's, can be in the contract that they have to come back and teach another year or two, or else they have to pay the money. So, so what I'm we asking ask. for is is simply that we explore what, if anything, we could do to reduce the risk of making an investment in a person and, and then come Having August 15th, the person says, oh, I've got another job. Because then we're in a worse pool of mud um, than we would have been in any other approach. So what, maybe we can't do anything, but let's make sure that, that we've inquired about what might be possible. I agree, and I will. Sounds good. So um, unless there are any other questions, I ask the board to vote to authorize me to institute the building commission and training program and approach the finance committee uh, for $40,000, however they want me to go about funding that. $40,000 or $20,000? It'll be, um, it won't be, it'll probably be 3010 30000 between March and, right. it wouldn't be the whole 40 now, correct? Thank you, bud. So would you include the difference between the thirty ten? is a line item in the next fiscal budget or would you look for a reserve fund transfer or a line item transfer to cover the difference i'd probably go to the fall town meeting and adjust the budget for the building commission at once i know all the numbers for the fall aren't you already operating with a five hundred thousand plus dollar deficit with it depends on the services? budget you want it depends on the budget using you a level services correct well do, using a level services budget i have a half a million dollar deficit yes. using the balance budget i don't i understand that I can well, see so John. it's six months. It's six months, so and how it, much? It seemed to me it should be three months and three months. March, yeah, April, May, right. June. Well, March, March, April, May, June. Four April, months May, and two June, months. July. Four August, months and two months. Sixty-seven. July, right. July, August. So it's a, a 40, four months, two 40, months. 60, 67, 63. Kind of thing. Thank you. So would someone like to make a motion? Um, I, I'll offer a motion, but before I do, I do want to say to just to respond to what Becky said, Becky. I am a firm believer in advertising at the same time, but this is a different situation. 
only in so much as we have a lot of things in progress here in town and that if we were not to do this and we were to hire somebody new or start interviewing in June, that there'd be no time for this individual to get up to speed with well, what's been accomplished at certain projects and what's outstanding. There'd be a tremendous amount of things going on and my comfort level with this based on past successes is very high. So for that reason, I move that this board authorize uh, the town manager to internally advertise for a building inspector zoning enforcement officer and training program at a cost not to exceed 40000 broken across uh, two fiscal years. Is there a second? Second. So I'll just comment that in general, I do believe we should uh, advertise our positions. I think there is uh, a case to be made for this. I I'm not totally convinced that if we that we would not, if we advertised and we found someone from outside, that they would not be able to understand what's going on in town pretty quickly if they were a professional building inspector. Um, but I'll go along with this. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 That is unanimous. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, in keeping with the thank you, talk thank you, you. In keeping with the select board annual goal to provide three months worth of meeting schedules in advance, I'm proposing uh, the following schedule. Uh, we would not meet next week. We would meet on the 27th, and you can see that agenda was already packing up. We would meet on the uh, 3rd, the 10th, uh, the 17th. We wouldn't meet. That's a holiday. We'd meet on the 24th, March 2nd, 9th. Uh, the 16th, the 7th, the 23rd, then I say we take a week off or a break after the six consecutive meetings. Then we would have uh, two meetings and then town meeting would happen on uh, the 27th. I've given you an idea on some of the agenda uh, things that we would be looking at. One thing that I would add to it on February uh, 24th while we're having the Green Communities Grant Review and uh, Project Discussion is I would also bring in the Stormwater Committee to talk about the MS4 permit, which I'll update you when we we go through the because I have an update on that, but I think it's a pretty good schedule. Um, we can fill in things as, as uh, time goes by, but it gives you a good handle on what we'll be addressing over the next several months. Yes, Becky. Um, I don't need to go first, but I had a couple comments here. Um, uh, first of all, I would propose that if we're going to not have a meeting on March 30th, just because we think we shouldn't have a meeting, that we should schedule that as a workshop to address the town manager review policy, which is going to take some discussion from all of us. And I think we should do that in a well before we have to embark on doing the town manager review. Um, but there may be other policies that come up at that point. Um, so I think we ought to block it in as a workshop if we don't need it as a regularly scheduled meeting. Um, I had a question about you seem to have put in two different places to discuss the CPA, and I wondered what you had in mind about that. Well, I thought you'd have a first discussion on it, and then I, I would imagine you wouldn't make a decision after that first meeting. You would need a second meeting to talk about it some more. So I, I figured I'd just schedule twice for you guys to talk about it. So I think our goal said we would meet with the CPA, the CPC, and a representative from the state. Well, I have to tell you something about that. I'm glad you said that, Becky, because uh, we have a representative from the state already. Bruce. Correct. <laughs> I met with Bruce this afternoon, um, and I did not realize that. Bruce was appointed to the Community oh. Preservation Coalition Steering Committee, which is a very prestigious appointment. There are only 11 in the state. Nice. So um, we have the internal expert. I have been working with Josh on putting together some information. I'm working with Bruce to refine that information. I want to make sure it's accurate. Um, so what I would like to do is have that first discussion on the 27th and then give people time to adopt it, play around with it in their heads, and then come back on the March 2nd or 3rd or whatever the date that I put there to talk about it again. And are, that, are that was my thought process. Are we envisioning both of those with the Community Preservation Committee? Um, I think the first one with them and then the second one potentially bringing in the state. The second one potentially with I first I want to do it internally right and then maybe bring in the state representative if you feel that's necessary at the second meeting that's my thought process anyway 
Did you talk with Bruce about, I think they have it on their agenda for their meeting tonight to discuss. That's why Bruce came to talk to me today, because he saw it on our agenda, and they were talking about it tonight. So Bruce and I had a very good meeting. So uh, I just think we ought to be sure to schedule when it is convenient for them, if yep. they're in the middle of you know a very busy cycle of approving grants, we can wait. If it doesn't work on the 27th, we, can, we have plenty of room right. to do it. You're not going to make a decision on the CPA for at least two years. You've got to wait until Surrender the Fund gets paid off. Well, so it, you have time. And it, I believe that the decision has to be made by town meeting. Not this town meeting. Not this right. town meeting. No, no, but I mean, in general, a, a decision. If you're going to bring it forward. Any to, to, yeah. You have to decide if you're going to bring it forward, Becky. Right. This board. Right. But, but, I mean, what our decision is not final. So no, 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 but it's your decision to bring it forward. Right. Because it's a two-step process, town meeting and a ballot. Right. <coughs> um, I also had a request. I am not going to be here on the February 10th, and I would like to hopefully be here when any an executive session on Boynton Meadows happens. So it hopefully. looks like we will not be doing Boynton Meadows on February 10th. I'm going to move that up to the third. Oh. I could. Yeah, I'm unavailable the 10th also. You're not here the 10th either. Right. No. Okay, so the two of you are not going to be here. Okay. I also wondered, and this is kind of looking really down the road, but when you get into April there, um, since the week the Monday before town meeting is the Patriots Day holiday. I wondered if we should tentatively plan to meet on Tuesday of that week. You could if we need to. Um, you absolutely can. If you're not going to meet on March 30th, I would think that it would make sense to meet on April 21st. We, I'm just, you could meet on March 30th. I just was looking at this and saying, well, in January you had a break. February, you had a break. Let's throw in a break in March after four or five meetings. We should, we should after six meetings. We should push for a federal holiday in March. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> March is the only month that doesn't have any federal holidays. All right, so is this good? This is tentative. Obviously, every John week I part. address it with Allison. Josh. I have a couple of points. Um, uh, the, the first one uh, is that we need to include in this conversation uh, a very um, thorough and, and thoughtful um, examination of once Surrendon Farms is paid off, whether we stay at 3%, yep. go to 2%, go to 1%, sure. don't do it at all. Um, and I don't, I don't know exactly what date in 2022 that Surrendon we stop paying on surrender. It's that fiscal, that complete, sometime in that fiscal year. Well, yeah, I don't know what, what that is, but we yeah. would need to have made a decision at, at, the, at the town meeting before that actually ends mm -hmm. right. to decide whether we're going to go forward when it ends or not. So it, it may not be as much time as, as people are feeling. So I'm thinking a decision would be made at the end of fiscal 21, which would be April of 20 one town meeting mm -hmm. for fiscal 22 which starts july 1st 2021 right so yes. we're about 14 months away from if if that's on the table correct uh, 14 months away from taking that to a town meeting and Can the I other item i want what john just said very quickly john all the documents you're looking for will be in a spreadsheet which will show you every single yeah, thing I've you seen just asked at the beginning of it well it's yeah. it, it, it's it's continuing along. Right. I just want to make sure everybody you know, understands that's everybody a part have of the copy of part of the discussion. What's happened over the last four or five years, yep. and what impacts it would have if it was eliminated, uh, one percent, uh, one and a half, two percent, uh, rather than the three percent it's at, and we'll show scenarios as to what things would look like in the past had it been in that position and moving forward. And the other item I have is, um, and this this one's really hard for me because I have great respect for Bruce Eason. Um, I, I know he's an honest man and an honorable man, um, but I'm, I'm a little afraid now that I've heard that, that we don't need to go outside because we have somebody from the state, that we are looking at a potential conflict of interest situation. 
Uh, Bruce is the treasurer of an organization that is looking for CPC money. And he is on the CPC, making decisions about who gets funding, as far as I know. And that's not a good arrangement. He always recuses himself when it comes to that organization. It still may be too close Understood. now that he's the state, the state body here, yeah. too. Right? And, I, and I won't want people to take a look at that before we go get ourselves in hot okay. water somewhere. OK. <laughs> Anything yeah. else? OK, that's our, that's our schedule. Um, very importantly, it's that time of year for the select board to call for the uh, 2020 Springtown meeting. I've given you a draft notice. It is on um, it is on page 12 of your packets. Let me get it up here on the screen for you. Um, so what I'm asking the board to do is call for the 2020 uh, Springtown meeting to be held on Monday, April 27th. Uh, 2020 beginning at 7 o'clock at the uh, Performing Arts Center. The warrant would open tomorrow officially. It would close on Friday, February 21st. I'd bring you a draft warrant on March 2nd and then you would hold your public hearing with the FinCom, but I, once the selectmen set this, I'd reach out to you. But I think we tentatively talked about the, the March 16th date for the public hearing with the Finance Committee. And then on uh, April 6th, you'd finalize the warrant. We'd post it on the 10th and then the town meeting would be on the 27th. I would ask for two votes from the board tonight. I would ask for you to call for the town meeting on uh, April 27th. Our bylaw says it will be in the last Monday in April unless you pick another date. And then I would ask you on a second vote to open the warrant uh, tomorrow and close it, close a business on Friday, February 21st. Please. I move that we uh, call for the uh, opening of the 2020 uh, Springtown meeting warrant uh, beginning tomorrow, January 14th, 2020, and close the uh, date for articles to be brought forward on Friday, February 21st at the close of business town hall. I'd ask you to call for the meeting first, Josh, and then do that as a second. <coughs> Well, that's my second motion. <laughs> <laughs> and the first motion would you like is. To make a first motion? Well, if somebody would second my second motion, then I'd move on to the first motion. <laughs> now the chair. Second. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I call for uh, the Springtown meeting uh, on April 27th, 2020. Second. All right. So we're going to take that second motion first? Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 And now the second motion. Uh, aye. 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 There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as far as the, uh, the, no. the budget update, obviously we just presented the budget last week, so I don't have an update, but I want to remind the board that we are meeting with the Finance Committee. And sorry for the typo, that should say FY21 budget. Uh, that we're going to meet with the Finance Committee in joint session on Saturday, January 25th, beginning at 8.30. Um, so far, they've invited in the library, the DPW, police, fire, water, uh, and the school. school. The, the, the school's coming just as a second. Yeah, but there's one other department. Oh, me to do debt with you. So that's that's what's on, on tap for that. Plus, I'll give a general update on where we are. Hopefully, the governor will have presented his budget by then. We'll have a good handle on what state aid could be as well. I have nothing else to update you other than to remind you to please on January 25th at 8.30. We'll be meeting downstairs. I just fixed the time. I thought yep, it was 9. Exactly. Yep, 8.30. They wanted to start early because it's a packed agenda. So uh, are we discussing the budget at all right now? Or? I can answer questions. I didn't have any new update for you, Becky. But I'm here to answer any questions that you may have. I'm not sure this is a question. Oh. <laughs> this is a comment, I guess. Uh, I'll, I guess I'll, I'll ask it as a question. You suggested that we cut something that's in our select board uh, budget that is a payment to the Pepperell yep. sewer. Yep. And if we cut that, the question is, who, what happens? Is sewer it, how department would have to raise. We have to raise it. And how much is it? Twenty-five thousand six hundred and eighty-four dollars. Right. Three dollars. Three dollars. Twenty-five thousand six eighty-three. Is that what you? Yes. 
So um, that's what I thought I understood from the brief discussion last week, and I just want to say as I thought about that, I think that that is um, not a place to look to make a cut. It's up to you and the finance committee. Because uh, the rate, the sewer rate payers are in large part the same as the water rate payers. And the water rate payers, as we know and are about to be further um, informed about, uh, are facing a fairly significant increase <coughs> in in their water bills to pay for the manganese problem. So I really don't think that we should cut something that is right now a town-wide expense and expect it to fall on a small subset of citizens who are already facing a pretty large increase in, uh, in, in a town service budget. We're going to have a healthy debate on that subject, I have a feeling. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, so may I go to other business really quickly? I'd ask the board to authorize the town manager and one member of the board to sign the warrants for the next 30 days pursuant to the Groton Charter. I don't understand this. What, it's a one-day holiday next week. It's not like Christmas. You're not week. meeting, and it's hard to get three of you to come by town hall. So that's why I'm at. If you don't want to do it, fine with me. I'm just bringing it up to make life easier. I can easily come by town hall next week. But if there are other people who are going to be out of town, that I will be here. I will be here. It sounds like we can make it work. Okay. I just I have probably the worst track record of anyone. So. Try to make things easy, but that's okay. Um, into I, the ongoing wait, issues. I had some other business. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I meant to mention this earlier. The Parks and Commons policy, um, I've had some preliminary discussion with the uh, Parks Commission about, and, and uh, one member and I will be discussing possible revisions to this policy. Um, I had suggested that we bring it back at the end of January, but that is not going to work because Parks Commission only meets, because their schedule doesn't sync up with ours, and you know, we, both boards have to um, comply with the open meeting law. So we will be discussing things. We'll have to push that off a little bit later to, to agree to it. Um, and the other thing I was going to ask, um, last year, Mark, you gave us a list of the department head goals for the calendar year? Yes, I did. And I wondered if you could do that again? Sure. I think it's helpful to see what they're all working on. Thank you. Can I get a copy? Well, can we all get a copy oh, of yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, all of this. I assume when Becky asked yeah. me, I could give it all five of you. Right. Yes, please. Thank you. I, you should have seen the list on the Parks and Commons of all of the property. Mm -hmm. It's really quite complex. Lots of things have been named and Okay, uh, very quickly, um, with regards to the uh, ongoing issues, I only want to talk about uh, to three of them. Um, obviously, we're going to go into executive session now with the manganese, but the item B, the Prescott School Sprinkler System, I have been working hard to find a company that would bid on that, and I think I've secured at least one. So we are working very hard to get that done. We'll make sure we get a bid on it. With regards to the MS4 permit, I um, want to... Yes, what Josh. if you only get one bid? Then town meeting has a choice. Sometimes you only get one bid. On to parties. accept or reject that Correct. one bid. Correct. Okay. Um, the MS4 permit, the um, Stormwater Management Earth Removal Committee has been working really, really hard. I want to announce tonight, and Connie, I'd ask you to put something in the paper. They'll be doing a legal advertisement, but they are holding their public hearing on proposals to fund this on February, uh, February, 4th. February 4th at 7 o'clock here in the town hall. This is a big deal. Um, they, they've been working very, very hard. They have a couple of proposals that they want to present to the public. And then I am going to bring them in to you on February 24th for you to meet with them and, and go through the proposals because there will be a warrant article to address this. But February 4th, 7 o'clock, the Stormwater Committee will be holding a public hearing on proposed funding mechanisms and amendments to bylaws to address the MS4 permit. So that is well underway and they're really working hard on it. Um, can I ask you a question on that? Yes. What kind of impact will that have on next year's um, operating budget? None, because it's going to be a surcharge on a tax bill, separate funding. It does not impact the operating budget. So that's what we'll be talking about. <coughs> If that makes sense, Josh. On the homeowners, taxpayers. 
Yep. It's an impact, but mm -hmm. he asks if it affects the budget. It does not affect the so budget. So it's an impact fee on a homeowner? Surcharge, yes. Similar right. to the CPA. And then it can't be used for, it can only be used for specific things. Just like the CPA can only be used for specific things. People need to stay tuned on this. Uh, it's big. That's why I'm making that announcement tonight. It's a big deal. So please um, pay attention. Um, with regards to the green communities, we submitted our application and we got to 15%. All right. We did. So, fingers crossed, we should hear that we got the green community designation in the next couple of weeks. Um, with regard to the last thing I wanted to mention, Florence Road Building Community's meeting tomorrow night, and we'll have an update for you at our next meeting on the 27th. I would ask... So library roof almost done? Say that again? Library roof. Yeah, they're doing the, the finals cleanup and everything else. As a matter of fact, I got their uh, DCAM um, progress report today, and they, Greenwood really did a great job on that project. Highway garage? Highway garage, we are on target for uh, finishing... 22nd of February. Thank you. So that's going really, really well. Very happy with that project. Building committee did a walkthrough last Tuesday, and I thought, it was, I thought you guys were all pleased with the progress. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's it. So I'd ask the board to approve minutes and then consider entering executive session as indicated. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have a liaison report? All right, then we have one set of regularly scheduled meeting minutes on January 6th. Does anyone have any corrections or comments on these? Uh, I had uh, one suggested change that I talked with Dawn about today. Um, let's see. Page. It was on the first page. Oh, yeah. You can see on the, she added it that I asked about the, the uh, it's uh, in the middle of the page there. I asked if the wording about the chair not serving in that capacity for more than two consecutive years was. You know, I'm sorry, could you say that again? I'm not sure. <coughs> okay. Right there, it's on the screen, John. So where she added the, the red words there, I think the stipulation is you can only serve two consecutive years. You cannot serve more than. I'm not sure what the difference is. Well, the way it's written, it says it, it, you can't serve two years. And you, you can serve two years. You cannot serve more than two years. Okay, then the more than, more than is appropriate. Yep. Right. All right, so I would entertain a motion to approve as amended. So move. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Aye. Sorry. All right. <laughs> Not quick enough here. Very good. I'd ask the select board to enter executive session pursuant to Master and Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A. Clause three to conduct strategy with against to litigation if an open meeting has a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares. The purpose is to meet in joint session with the Groton Water Commission to discuss the DEP consent order. I'd ask the board to make that motion and enter into executive session, not to return to public session. So moved. Do I have to say it again? No. Is there a second? Second. All right. And the chair does so declare. Um, executive session, so it's a roll call. Manugi and I. Geiger, I. Riley, aye. Yeah. Pine, aye. Very good. So we will enter into executive session. I'm at 7.08 now, if we can take like five minutes. That'd be good. Okay.